As technology changed, we added new capabilities. We started changing the performance and the requirements of our motherboards. Then we also changed the way that our power supplies worked. On the version 1.3 of the ATX 12 volt standard, there is still a 20 pin main motherboard connector, but we needed more power. We needed more power for hard drives, for bigger video cards, for other capabilities inside of our computer. So we added another connector that goes directly to the motherboard. That's an additional four pins that primarily have power associated with those, a lot more power. So it's not that it's standardized 24 pins, it's a 20 pin connector and then an optional four pin connector. Sometimes they were put on together and you could actually pull them apart to go into different places of the motherboard. This standard also had an auxiliary connector. It's a six pin flat connection. Later on, the standards changed. There's another six pin connector for the motherboard that's for PCI Express. This is not that one. This one was primarily for a motherboard still running Pentium 4. So this is pretty old style technology, but those motherboards needed that kind of connection, that auxiliary power connection on them. Now these standardized uh, mother these standardized power supplies, uh, they didn't re we didn't require in these standards that every particular power supply provide a certain number of ports. So some might have an auxiliary connector, some might not have an auxiliary connector. It wasn't part of the specification. So we really needed to have a specification that when we bought a power supply, we knew exactly what we were getting. And as we evolved the standards, we changed this so that we we knew that there would be some standardization across these. The next big version that was out was an ATX 12 volt 2.0, which said you have this 20 pin connector. You absolutely have four pins for the motherboard. In fact, you can see it almost locks in there. It is backwards compatible with the previous versions. Uh, this was also the version of our power supply standard that said you have to have a SATA connection on there. You want to be sure if you get an ATX 12 volt 2.0 standard power supply that you you'll be able to power up a SATA, SATA drive no matter what. We were putting a lot more SATA drives in our computers. It was important that our power supplies keep up with that. The version 2.2 and 2.3 are really, we're now up to the latest version of our power supplies that we're using. Now we're using a 24 pin main connection for the motherboard regardless. Really it was PCI Express, some of the additional power requirements from that that were driving it. Additional uh, increased output for the positive 12 volt DC rail. And we just got rid of the auxiliary connector altogether. So that's why you don't see them anymore on the most recent power supplies. Version 2.3 is the current version. What the, all they really did in that one was increase the energy efficiency requirements for those power supplies, which really brought them into a standard called Energy Star, which is a standardized, a worldwide standard for power supply or power efficiency in our devices. There are so many computers. This was really a great opportunity to make sure that the power supply manufacturers were, were creating the most efficient power sources possible that we would use across all of our computers. If you're buying a new power supply these days, especially the 2.3 version, this is a 2.3 compatible power supply, 2.2 or 2.3. It's got a lot of different connectors on it. There's your 24 pin connector for your motherboard. You might be plugging in a SATA drive or perhaps some legacy drives. You'll need a Molex connector for that, maybe even a floppy drive connector. This power supply includes the four pin that has the additional 12 volt capabilities and a connector for power if you're powering a PCI Express bus. So that one power supply covers the bases. You've got everything you need now coming out of that power supply to get your motherboard up and running with all of the different components. Unfortunately, not all motherboards are created equal. There are a number of manufacturers. I, I listed out here, for instance, Dell is a very good example. Between 1996 and 2000, created their own proprietary motherboards. And you still see them from time to time, not just from Dell, but from other manufacturers too. Where these motherboards aren't the standard ATX, they're not the standard BTX, they are something that that organization has created very specifically for them. And if that's the case, you may find that the power supply and the power connectors on those motherboards don't follow the standards. So the, the connectors look very, very similar. But it's not going to work. If you try it, you, you'll you be in trouble in many cases. Those connectors were never designed to be that way. So you want to look at the documentation you have. For instance, this is a adapter that will take it from a standard power supply, an ATX 12 volt standard power supply, and really create the type of connectors that you would need 
for these custom motherboard configurations. Whether it's the six pin auxiliary, you've got other connectors here that go on to the motherboard. You may find on some of these older systems, if you're upgrading the power supply and you're removing that Dell power supply from that Dell system, you're putting in a third party power supply, you may also have to buy this extra adapter. So look at your documentation and make sure you don't mix these up or run into a situation where you're ready to plug in the power and your connectors are nothing like they are on the motherboard. So that's probably a case where these adapters can really get you out of a jam when you run into those proprietary motherboard configurations. I mentioned earlier that there's different voltages on the power supply. They might work on 115 volts. They might work on 230 volts, somewhere around there, depending on what country you're in. And so you may need to set a switch that's on the back of your power supply. Here's an example of the big red switch that says 230. That means when I plug in, I need to make sure that I'm using 230 volts for my power on this power supply. If you aren't quite certain, grab your multimeter, plug into the wall, and see what type of voltage it has in there. And you'll know exactly what's coming out of the wall. Do not plug in a power supply configured for 115 volts into a 230 volt power source or all the smoke will come out. And as we know, the smoke really runs things. If we let the smoke out, it won't work anymore. You'll fry that power supply pretty quickly. So you want to be very, very particular, very careful. Make sure you check the switch in the back and make sure it's set properly. Some power supplies don't even have a switch. It might have a switch on the back, or there may not even be one. So check with the manufacturer's configuration for this power supply. Make sure that it either says that it works regardless of what you plug in, and that it's auto switching between those different voltages, or it may be a power supply that only works on one particular voltage. So you want to check those. Make sure before you plug in exactly what you can expect to see from that power supply. Let's review what we need to know about computer power from this module. Our first question is, what measurement of real power use is the same as volts multiplied by the number of amps? If you recall back to the math that we had there, that's the same thing as watts. It's that real power use we refer to as watts in our computer. How many pins are in the main motherboard power connector? There's that big connector that we use to plug directly into the motherboard. And it might be 20 pin if we're on our original configuration, or it might be a 24 pin. That was standardized with our ATX12V version 2.2. So you'll see different kinds. In fact, you may see that you're able to plug a 20 pin connector into a 24 pin motherboard slot as long as you don't need any of that additional power. So check your motherboard specifications. It will tell you exactly how much power, what type of connector to use, and where you should be plugging in. And our last question, how could you use the same power supply with both 115 volts and 230 volt power sources? And as you recall from those slides we were looking at just a few minutes ago, we set the voltage switch on the back of the power supply, or we check to make sure that the power supply is one that automatically switch between both of those voltages. Well, that covers what we needed to know about our computer power, looking at proprietary configurations, AC. We've looked at wattage and voltages. And we've looked at capacities of our computers. And lastly, we examined how we could change the voltages and what those different pins meant. If you'd like to see any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website. Visit us now at freeaplus.com.